Welcome fellow Ruggers to our round three review. A great weekend of rugby. This weekend I was two for one with my predictions. So overall on the tournament, right now I'm sitting at seven and two. So let's get right into it and go into my match of the week. For my match of the week or my match of the round is Italy versus France. Came down to the wire. It ended up in a 13-13 draw. Exciting match to watch. And some of my takeaways from France, they did great as far as beating defenders. They had 33 to Italy's 11. They had a great scrum. They only lost one throughout the whole match. So that showed that they were dominant up front, but they did have 18 turnovers and 20, 20 handling errors. So need to work on that a little bit. France has definitely not been the France that I thought that they were going to be from the beginning. So we'll see again with these last two matches how it goes. Uh, with Italy, they had a great second half. You could see, no matter what, Italy always plays with a lot of heart. Uh, I, I probably said this a bunch, but I just love the passion that the Italians have not just for their country, but for their uh, rugby team. They did have 33 missed tackles. So they made a lot of tackles, but they missed a lot. So kind of picking that up a little bit. Then they do need to work on their scrum. They lost three throughout the match. So working on that. Now here, let's take a look at my two players of the match. Charles was in charge this week, one try, 10 tackles, which was second on the team. And then we have Mr. Capuza. He had one try, and he ran for 61 meters. For second match, we have Scotland versus England. England lost 30 to 21. Scotland's bringing that... Uh, that cup home, but the score does not reflect exactly how England played. England played pretty well. Um, so some of my takeaways from England, we're just going to get started with that, is they had 147 passes to only 25 handling errors. I know that still having 25 handling errors is a lot, but compared to the tackles, I personally, I just think that's still impressive. They were fantastic in the ruck. They won 80 rucks, only lost two. So them being solid, but finishing. Um, again, bringing it down to those last 15 minutes, really trying to finish strong. Uh, again, it, it, it was almost a complete match by England. And my takeaways for Scotland is they did win seven scrums. So... England, so far, in my opinion, has been the second best uh, scrum team. So having Scotland win seven, that was impressive. Their offloads were great. Passing was great. And they had 150 tackles. But again, being consistent. they got to be consistent in order to, to win. They're still in the hunt. Uh, they're not as good as Ireland, but they have definitely been impressive so far in the Six Nations. Now let's take a look at... My two players of the round. Duhan had three tries, 89 meters, six defenders broken. He leads the Six Nations with five tries. Then we have George Furbank, one try, and he ran for 82 meters in this match. Our third and final match, we have Ireland versus Wales. Once again, Ireland scored over 30 points. They beat Wales 31-7, to seven, dominant performance. For my takeaways for Ireland, they had 495 meters gained compared to Wales, who had 289. Fantastic with that. Their passing, they had 251 passes, 16 handling errors. With this too, they had 36 broken defenders. So not only are they getting meters, getting a lot of passes, but they're breaking down with those defenders. They were great towards the try line. There were a few times, three to be exact, that I can think of when Wales was pushing, 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 and Ireland stopped them got, getting a, a few 
turnovers. But Ireland did have 13 penalties, two yellow cards. So working on that, I know it's, it's tough to say, Ireland work on something, but they've just been playing great. We've got to find something. And then Wales, they... They only made, I say only, they made 84% of their tackles. Got to work on that because Ireland made 92% of theirs. Um, they did have seven offensive penalties. So working on those penalties. But one thing that I want to look at is I've talked about young guys consistently. I've talked about the line out. So it's been um, pretty regular what I'm talking about with Wales. But I want to look at the backs. I think that the backs have really proven that they're going to – they're not only just Rio Dyer, but I think that they are really starting to form into the the Welsh team that we're going to see in a few years. This is a 100% rebuild, but I do see that the backs are improving. They're helping the team improve, even though it was 31-7. to 7, I still think that Wales had a, had a lot of things to hang their heads on. I think that they, they did give it their all. Now let's take a look at my two players of the match. Aki was great, not only just with his runs, but with his passing. He's been very consistent in these six nations. We have Cameron Wynette, 13 runs, 106 meters. He is now first in the six nations in meters carried and gained. Well, everyone, that concludes our round three review. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe to this channel. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our next video. We're going to be doing our round four preview. Cheers.